Hello everyone, DJ here. Today let's talk about reduced retirement age. Now this is a topic that has caused a lot of confusion over the last several years and hopefully we can clear up a little bit of that today. Since the 1940s, reservists have had to wait until age 60 before they could receive their pensions. But now there is an exception to that rule. Please pay careful attention here because there's a lot of rules to this exception, a lot that I have to say, and everything's interconnected. So pay attention to what I'm doing here, and hopefully everything will become clear in the end. Now, due to there being so much information about this change, this is going to be a longer episode than usual, but I'll try to make it as simple as I can. In January of 2008, the law changed to allow certain reservists to receive their retired pay earlier than 60. This law was meant to recognize the increased importance of the reserve components in conducting, as it's called, the global war on terrorism. This change went into effect on 29 January 2008. Probably due to the cost involved, this change was not retroactive to 11 September 2001. Here's a brief idea of how the reduced retirement law works. Reduced retirement age retirement law, I should say. There are certain types of active duty that qualify. So not all active duty qualifies for this. For each 90-day period served in a fiscal year, mark that, Under these certain types of active duty, a reservist will be allowed to retire, or rather to receive his retired pay, three months earlier than 60. So keep that in mind. 90 days equals three months. Roughly the same, I know. Did you notice all the provisos in that statement, though? Yes, it is a bit tricky. The 90-day blocks have to be within a fiscal year. The federal fiscal year runs from 1 October of one year to 30 September of the next year. This fiscal year rule means, for example, if a reservist has served 89 days of active duty and then the next day is 1 September, yes, correction, 1 October, then that entire time, that entire block of time, the 89 days, will not count for reduced retirement age eligibility. This means, in short, that a year of active duty will not necessarily equal a year of reduction in the reservist retired retirement age. It could be anywhere from six to nine months, or if it falls perfectly, a year, but typically nine months, sometimes six. This has disgruntled quite a few reservists out there, but more on that later. Now, here's an example of what I said before, just to try to make it a little clearer. Uh, Sergeant Matthews is mobilized to serve as part of Operation Enduring Freedom on 3 August 2009. He serves active duty for a period of 390 days, or for those who want to keep track of the date, 27 August 2010. And I know on a podcast, on a video, that listening to numbers without seeing it in a slide or some other visual format is difficult, but try to bear with me. So, he serves from 3 August 2009 to 30 September 2009. That's exactly 89 days, like I was saying before. This period of time will not count for reduced retirement age because the next day, what would have been his 90th, is the start of a new fiscal year. His service for determining reduced retirement age will restart on 1 October and begin accumulating up to to 90 days, hopefully, so he can be qualified for some reduction. Now... Let's continue to the end of his uh, tour, from 1 October 2009 to the day he is released from active duty, which is the 27th of August 2010. He has served an additional 331 days. If you divide the 331 days by 90, 
There are three full 90-day blocks within this time frame, or 270 days. As a result, Sergeant Matthews is eligible to receive retired pay nine months earlier than 60. That's difficult enough to understand, I know, but it does get easier for those who served on a qualifying tour of active duty later on. In fact, on 1 October 2014, the law changed again to allow qualifying active duty to cross over fiscal years. So now instead of being cut off, it can go across those two years. This means that shorter periods of service in one fiscal year will not be discounted simply because 1 October arrived. And naturally, this law was not made retroactive. So 1 October 2014 forward. Let's take Sergeant Matthews' example again and just change the dates of his mobilization. So Sergeant Matthews mobilized on 3 August 2015 and serves until 27 August 2016. This is a total of 391 days of active duty. There is no limitation because his service or because of his service crossing fiscal years. So divide 391 days by 90. He now has four full blocks of 90 day periods and as a result can receive his retired pay one full year earlier. I hope that makes sense so far. Because uh, one way or the other, we're going to dive in a little deeper. So here we go. So how do I prove I'm eligible for reduced retirement age? You may be asking. This is where a bit of record keeping is required. As I've said before in other episodes, don't expect your branch of service to do this for you. While they may have a complete record of your documents, uh, re all those required to prove your eligibility, not all services are as fastidious as others about maintaining your records. So just be prepared. Take a little responsibility and keep what you need because those couple of documents are worth a lot of money to you later. You will need your active duty orders, all amendments to them, your release from active duty order, or refrad as some of us call it. That order is not required, but it's definitely helpful. And absolutely your DD form 214. And if there's a correction to that, a DD 215. If you have multiple periods of active duty, like uh, some people who have multiple deployments, then you will need your orders and 214s for each deployment involved. You do not, by the way, need to send these documents to anybody until you are applying for your retired pay. It's best to complete this application and send it to your branch of service at least six months before you are eligible. And they are naturally are going to verify that you are eligible for that reduced retirement age long before they ever send it to finance to actually pay you. A retirement services officer is who I would recommend to assist you in determining what your actual, actual eligibility date would be. And that person can also assist you with your retired pay application. This begs the question, of course, of when are you eligible? Well, if you're in the Army National Guard, this is an easy question to answer. You can find your eligibility date on the top right-hand corner of your retirement point statement. It's called the RPED, the Retired Pay Eligibility Date, R-P-E-D. If this date is less than your 60th birthday, then hopefully that's the correct RPED for you. If the retirement pay eligibility date is your 60th birthday, or you think whatever is showing is not correct, then you should through your chain of command, of course, make contact with your state's Retirement Points Accounting Manager, or RPAM NCO, for your state, and you know, provide them with what is needed to update your retired pay eligibility date. Normally, it's the same documents that I mentioned before. In fact, 
Uh, in a previous episode, when I talked about records, you should be able to find all of these records in your electronic personnel file, and if not, definitely track them down and get them added and keep a copy for yourself, because again, they prove invaluable. If you're a member of a different reserve component, things are a little different. There's not a statement on your particular retirement points accounting sheet which shows your pay eligibility date. So you will have to get with a, a retirement service officer with your mobilization documents and you know, help them help you in determining what your actual eligibility date would be. Let's move on to another common question. I deployed to Iraq in 2006 while I was in the regular army. Will this service count for reduced retirement age? I get this one a lot. Uh, the short answer is no. Now, there are two strikes against this deployment from the start. One is it took place prior to the reduced retirement age law going into effect. And Two, it took place while the member was in a regular component, an active component. Now, this law only applies to reserve component members. Sorry, regular Army, regular Navy guys. You know, this doesn't affect you at all. Now, let's move on. Uh, so you may say, great, I'm a reservist and I have qualifying service. I can get my retirement six months earlier than 60. Cool. All right. So what about TRICARE medical coverage? Well, that is the bummer factor in this conversation. If or even though that you can qualify for your retired pay earlier, uh, TRICARE medical coverage for you and your family will not start until you turn 60. The only exception to this would be if you have purchased TRICARE Reserve Select or TRICARE Retired Reserve, these are both premium-based forms of TRICARE, once again, your retirement services officer can help you find more information about the types of medical coverage available through TRICARE, so please consult that individual for your service. Next question. I am an AGR, or Active Guard or Reserve uh, Soldier. Does my AGR service count for reduced retirement age? And once again, we have a strike against this particular type of active duty. AGR service, Active Guard and Reserve service is considered the same as being in a reserve component. Correction, in, in an active component and does not count for reduced retirement age. However, if you have a qualifying deployment or other type of active duty during your AGR service, and you end up not being able to retire on the active duty side of the house, you will qualify for reduced retirement age if you are also eligible for a reserve retirement later on. And uh, for those folks who are concerned about my constantly saying different types of active duty, please check the notes for this show. I will put a link to all of the different types of active duty which qualify for reduced retirement age on my website. So let's move on to the next question. We're almost done here. I am serving on a temporary tour of active duty or active duty for operational support or active duty for special work. Does my service count? Now this one is a bit tricky. Eligibility in these cases is entirely dependent on how your orders are worded. In most cases, this type of active duty does not qualify. However, to be sure, consult with a retirement service officer and let that person examine your orders. There are several little details in those orders that determine whether or not this particular service qualifies. So get an informed decision on them. Don't just assume that it is or is not eligible. All right, last question. I don't have a DD-214 for my active duty service, and my branch of service doesn't have one either. What can I do to prove I am eligible for reduced retirement age? 
All right, you've got two options here. I recommend trying both at the same time just in case one doesn't work. You can request pay documents from your branch's finance office. If you're, if you're National Guard, that would be at the state level. And if you're in the other reserve components, that would probably be in a regional or national headquarters. For example, the Army Reserve goes by regions. Uh, I'm not as pop in fact the Air Reserve and the Air National Guard have a, a central national headquarters. So go through those agencies uh, in order to get copies of your leave and earning statements. Uh, and you can also request leave and earning statements directly from the Defense Finance and Accounting Service or DFAS. I will upload or I will put a link to the uh, online LES request in the show notes below. By the way, when you make a request through the DFAS website, you will need to upload some form of photo ID as part of the request, so be prepared there. All right, now, I believe that's quite enough for one day. I know this is a lot of information to absorb all at once. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below or you can contact me directly by email with your questions. That's all for now. Until next time, thank you for joining me, and of course, thank you for your service. If you liked what you heard on today's episode, then please go below and give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, please let other people know about this channel and the information it can provide for them. If you have questions or comments, then have no qualms about posting them in the comments section below. Please remember the RC Retirement YouTube channel and the RC Retirement website are not recognized or endorsed by the Department of Defense, the Department of Veterans Affairs, or any other government agency. The information presented in these resources are for entertainment and informational purposes only. Also, the content of either of these resources should not be considered financial or legal advice. Please consult with your own legal counsel, accountant, and financial planner before making any decisions based on what you have learned here. As always, thank you for watching the RC Retirement YouTube channel.